Mr. Jacobs will see you now. <clears throat> Betty. Yes, sir. I don't want anyone else in here without an appointment. Yes, sir. What was that all about? It was Mr. Durning who owns our latest site. Evidently, something rubbed him the wrong way, and he's considering getting out of his contract. Trouble. Oh, I've got a beauty for you. Mentone, Alabama. Unbelievable. As the good people of Mentone say, there's a vein of coal deep enough and rich enough to choke a mule. I want this land, and I want it now, before somebody else grabs it up. You think you can handle it? We can handle it. See that you do. I don't want any more episodes like today. Don't worry. We'll get you the land. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Dad? Yeah. Thanks. What did he say? It's not what he said, it's what he did. It's all ours. Mr. Jacobs is waiting. Plane tickets and reservations. You know, you were so lucky. I have always dreamed of visiting the South. Pines and magnolias, orange blossoms. <laughs> what do you think I'm gonna do? Go for a rock on the porch, sipping a mint julep with Scarlett O'Hara? I'm gonna be kicking Scarlett's tail and taking names. Have a nice trip, y'all. is an airport? Oh, for Pete's sakes, I've had hotel rooms bigger than this. Veronica, shut up and be charming. Hi, you must be Ben Owen. Mr. Jacobs, uh, Miss Waters. Don't usually shake a lady's hand. I prefer to kiss them. Guess I've been in the big city too long. Oh, uh, the truck's this way. Why don't you let me help you with one of those bags? Oh, well, a girl could get used to this. If every man's as helpful as you, I may never want to leave your town. Well, I can think of a few men in particular who'd be willing to help you with a thing or two. This is going to be fun. Did he say truck? Oh, please, please, be very careful. That luggage is extremely expensive. Mine, on the other hand, you can just toss right in.
takes my breath away every time. I had no idea this part of the country was so beautiful. Is the water clean? Never mind. I'm sure we can buy some bottled spring water. Do your stores carry the French kind? Uh, young lady, I'll have you know we have the purest water running off our files. Has it been tested? Veronica, honey, why don't you give the man a break? Oh, are you two engaged? No. No, she's my assistant. Oh, I, I thought maybe you were buying the Hawkins place to settle on, start a family. No, we're not. Well, do you plan on uh, just vacationing there? You going to develop the property? Mr. Owen. Oh, no. What? What is it? It's Big Red. <coughs> station out here. We need help. <clears throat> Poopy pants, look up the road. It's Ben! It's Ben on truck again! Dang gum, Bucky, you didn't have to yell. Yeah, how many times do you think we'll see that truck in a week? Well... He's got somebody with him. And I just thought... You just thought you'd be nosy. Looks like you're gonna have to have another truck, Ben, unless you want to keep paying me to fix it. Well, you know my motto. Drive them till the wheels fall off. Thank you, Buck. Los Angeles, California. What are you talking about? Ben's friends. They're from Los Angeles, California. City of Angels. Actually, New York City. Colin Jacobs. Bucky Jones. See, I was close. Yeah, Bucky, I forgot that you are a geographical expert. And who, may I ask, is this pretty thing? Well, Thurman can't stand around all day. I got business to attend to. You wouldn't charge me for a taxi ride up the mountain, would you? Oh, a taxi. I'll take them. I'll take them. Bucky, you're always trying to get out of work. Don't matter none if I lose my job. I've got big plans. You got bags. I'll get them. Who has $5? I don't have less than a 20. Here, she looks like she means business. Oh, she'll be wanting that money for the ticket to the festival. Son, there's only two ways to handle women. And nobody knows either of them. Mr. Ben Owen, I've been out here three times this week. I want you to know I'm down in my back, and I'm in charge of this festival, and I do have a deli to run. Besides, I've got new entertainment this year. The Lookout Mountain Cloggers. Yes, of course, Mrs. Murphy. How inconsiderate of me. I realize you're busy. Here you go. Only one ticket? <gasps> Did she say she owned a deli? Oh, I'll bet she has some bottled water. You who, madam, excuse me. Excuse me. What a woman. I'll let you know if Thurman can fix Big Red or if he wants to send her off to the junkyard. Don't be disrespectful. I'll drop off your bags at the end. Oh, thanks. Come on inside. Hello? Hello? What? I'd like some mineral water. Well, I'm busy, but sit down and look at the menu. I'll be back to take your order in just a minute. Thought you might like a little something to tempt your appetite. Now, what can I get you? Mineral water or spring water, whatever you have. And eat? Nothing. Mineral water is all I want. All I got is tap or this. 
my secret recipe. Strictly non-alcoholic. It'll pick up that appetite. My appetite is fine, thank you. I'm just thirsty. Thirsty for love. Listen, honey, nothing but a dog likes a bone. Colin, Colin. That awful woman touched me. Can you believe this little piece of nowhere? No bottled water, no mineral water, no nothing. Oh, except this. It's called cabin cooler. Probably give me parasites. So where are we going? Where's the hotel? <laughs> You're kidding. That's the hotel? Don't tell me I can hear it already. No gym, no spa, no valet, no room service. What in the world? What in the world? Oh, that horrible Bucky person. He just dumped it. Was he raised in a cave? Unbelievable. What, is he back? You hear that? It's scratched. I knew it. It's scratched. I only cry when I'm not sleeping. And I ain't slept since you've been away. You must be Colin Jacobs. Come on up and have a seat. Don't stop playing on my account. Well, it does just so happen that I have another little number I need to rehearse before the big festival. Did Ben tell you I was playing? Well, let me tell you, I'm a humble fella, but last year when I played at the festival, it brought tears to eyes. It's almost like Uncle Walt himself come down from heaven and stood right beside me. Did Ben tell you about my Uncle Walt? He played every year for 20 years straight at the State Fair. Colin, what are you doing? Lord bless. I start singing Uncle Walt songs and they just come to me. Women. Big women, little women, tall women, short women, fat women, even the low stickly women. Uncle Walt could always draw a crowd of women. Uh, oh. Somebody! Grab hold of this. me. Oh, Come on in. No, no, I just came to tell you that Mr. Owen called for you. He can't make it at three. He wants me to take you over to the camp so Tommy can show you the Hawkins place. Tommy? Tommy Owen. Oh. I, uh, notice your lady friend's feeling a little poorly. Oh, uh, yeah, it's all that fresh air. Oh. You want me to, uh, have Mama take a look at her? Is she a doctor? Of sorts. She's an herb doctor. I think that'd be a great idea. Who is it that owns all the Mark Twain books around here? Oh, Mr. Owen donated those to the hotel. Reckon he's read them so much he's practically memorized every line. He's always got something clever to say. We'll, uh, need to leave at 2.30 to get to the camp on time. 2.30 it is. Oh. Poor thing. This reminds me of New England. Never been to Europe. Bet they talk funny over there. Usually, the kids who go to special schools come up here for a week-long session. Those who go to regular school come up on the weekend. There's about near always something going on. Tommy and Ben own it together, but uh, Tommy runs the place. Colin, been nice knowing you. I'll be back for his remains around five. Come on, I'll take you to Christy, the camp director. She'll know where Tommy is. The Little River group goes to the fishing pier. The Black Creek group goes to the basketball court. And the Lookout Ridge group goes to the ropes course. Little River group, stand up and follow me out, please. Black Creek group. Hey, it is a madhouse today. Christy, this is Colin Jacobs. Colin, Christy Moore. He's uh, here about the Hawkins place. Oh, and we never did find Tommy, did we? Look, I promised about eight kids I'd help them catch a record-breaking fish. Do you mind? No problem. Come on, Marianne. Must be tough being around these kids all day. No, not really. Just takes some getting used to. You know, Tommy is probably down at the stables. I can take you. Miss Christie, I'm supposed to be the ropes leader, but Jenny says he's going to do it. 
But you know, if you tell me where the stables are, I can probably find it myself. Thanks. Just follow the green signs. You can't miss it. And Colin, don't let Tommy push you around. OK. Scared me. Sorry. Do you know uh, where I can find Tommy Owen? Inside. The stables? Yes. I'm supposed to meet Tommy Owen here. Do you know where I can uh, find him? You're supposed to meet him here. Oh, really? And you are? Colin Jacobs. I'm seeing the Hawkins place today. You are? Yeah, I'm thinking of buying it. My father. For some reason, he thinks I'm his residential real estate gopher. Well, I don't have time to drop everything I'm doing every time he snaps his fingers. What does he think I do all day long? Throw water balloons? I was taking a break. Tommy, we've got a problem. Tell me about it. You know, I grew up on Shady Grove. The Hawkins are like a second family to me. And they let the kids from camp ride their trails, feed the animals, and the children love watching the sunset on the brow. If you are gonna buy that place, I need to know where we stand. Well, I'll do the best I can. Are you gonna show me the property? No, I can't today. But that's Dad's fault. He never checks with me first. What am I supposed to do? Beats me. You know what? I have an idea. Maybe you ought to see that land on horseback, the way God intended. OK, I'll just go back to the hotel and saddle up Silver and go for a little trail ride. Could I interject here that the barber's man is telling me he's got 25 flats of ice cream he's supposed to unload here? Well, I told him it was a mistake. No, 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 it's not. I got a great deal on ice cream this month. Tommy, we don't have a freezer for 25 flats of ice cream. Um, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'll get you a freezer if you show me the property. Did you hear me say no? Tommy, um, why don't you go pay the man, tell him to bring the ice cream back later this afternoon. I'll take care of... Colin. Colin Jacobs. Just call Dad to come get him. It's his client. Oh, 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 oh. And by the way, the ground beef guy's coming tomorrow. I got a great deal on that, too. What? 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 Wait, 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 wait. Tommy and I had our eye on that land for ourselves. We were going to start a home for the aging, but the money's just not there. So I guess you're going to get it. If I ever see it. Well, why don't you come with me to the pavilion and watch the kids set up for the prom? We could use an extra hand. I'm not doing anything else. Ah, feeling better? Are you sick too? No, 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 I'm feeling just peachy. Well, in an hour, give her more of my herbal mixture. Two tablespoons, one cup of boiling water. Do 
still need to write this down. No, no, I have an excellent memory. Uh, does she need to take more of this medicine right now? No, no, I'm feeling much better, thank you. Anyway, Mrs. Murphy, you're probably needed back at that fabulous deli or somewhere, and you've got that festival to plan. Now, see to it that you drank that tea. My gene was born and bred on it. He's the picture of health. He's the picture of a nut. Did you look at the property? Actually, no one had time. I'm, I'm going to see it tomorrow. This is asinine. Nobody had time to show you the property that we've all but promised to buy, but the town witch doctor's got all the time in the world to cram fungi down my throat. That's it. First thing in the morning, I'm calling that Ben Owen person. Veronica, don't make trouble. These people are not stupid. Ha! Huh. If you slip up and they find out why we're here... The question is, do you remember why we're here? Go ahead, Colin. Smile that charming smile and listen so sympathetically to every little complaint people have. Maybe you'll win Mr. Congeniality. Doesn't matter to me, though. Know why? Because I know the truth. And soon Daddy Dear will know the truth. At the end of the day, you don't have what it takes. Mr. Owen? I thought I'd bring over this aerial photo of Mr. Hawkins' land, the Shady Grove Ranch. Oh, oh great. <clears throat> Has Mama Murphy been in here? Yeah. Uh, she just left. <laughs> when you've been running from that woman and her herbal tea as long as I have, you get to know that smell. She hasn't caught up with me yet. So, what'd you think? Actually, I didn't see the property. Tommy didn't have any time. I guess I'd better apologize for my daughter. She's a little... Well, I should have expected... I'll show it to you tomorrow. I'm sorry about the inconvenience. You know, there's nothing in the world that some man can't make a little worse and a little cheaper. Except land. Now, that's the one thing you can count on. And it's the only thing they're not making any more of. And here you have the home place still in good condition. Now, the property backs up to the brow. Overlooks the valley, crosses the mountain. It's fertile. Mr. Hawkins rests his soul. He always had good luck with potatoes and soybeans. Now, all told, there's 800 acres. Mm. I can see you're tired. Let's look over this tomorrow before we see the place. Uh, uh, Mr. Owen, should I sign some kind of preliminary agreement to, to reserve the land? Down here, all you really need is a handshake. My words, my bond. Thank you, Mr. Owen. Call me Ben. All right, Ben. Good night. Good night. Only love you when you're sleeping. <laughs> Hi. Hello? Do you mind? They're scuffed. No, I don't mind at all. So, uh, Gene, why don't you tell me about the camp? Camp Riverview? Yeah. What do you want to know? Well, uh, how does a state-of-the-art uh, camp for handicapped children end up in a place like this? I mean, no offense, but this place is not exactly on the map. And we like it that way. I reckon it's just what those kids need to get away from them big cities and those fancy doctors where everybody knows them and expects them to act a certain way. They have a lot of fun up here, Tommy says. Tommy and Christy, they run the camp by themselves? Uh-huh. That's two feisty women for you. Best friends. Neither one of them go out with me. Can't imagine why not. Well, they're college-educated women, so there's no accounting for their taste. You didn't go to college? No. What a surprise. Don't need college when you got the gift. Uncle Walt had it. My daddy had it. Now I got it. And you want it, don't you? Lord bless. Uncle Walt could always woo the women. I'm going to bed. I sure hope she ain't your sweetheart. Why is that? I don't think she fits in here too well. Of course, Shady Grove will be yours. I guess it's none of my business who you decide to bring along. What you tell me about this prom thing? Oh, the prom? Well, at the end of every session, they have one. Tommy says a lot of schools don't have dances that the kids can get to. And let me tell you something. Those kids love to dance. Of course, she's had to fight Mama on it. Mama don't believe in dancing. Too bad. Probably do her good to cut a rug. 
You know, come to think of it, I don't even think I went to my prom. Well, heck, let's go. Tommy won't mind. Why not? Of course, the music's not gonna be as good as mine. That's rock and roll. watch Tommy no I mean yes she, you can watch um I was just going to the kitchen to get some cups for the punch we we ran out of cups for the punch looks like everybody's having a real nice time yeah they are um well I better get going because I got to get those cups for the punch for the punch Can't see why you just don't let me play at these things instead of hiring a DJ. I'm a lot cheaper. Hey, let me tell you something. Tommy loves two things, this camp and her privacy. You'd be better off trying to catch a jackrabbit. You said I was trying to catch anything, uh, anyone, whatever. Uh -huh. Dad, please tell me you found a freezer. Good morning to you, too. Dad, yes or no, did you find a freezer? Christy is going to kill me. I've got a little story to tell you. Well, could you make it fast, because I'm pressed for time. There's two kinds of birds, Tommy. There's the vulture that flies around eating dead things and living off the past. And there's the hummingbird that flies around collecting the sweet nectar of life. Now I'm a vulture? No, Tommy, you're a beautiful, wonderful young woman. I just hate to see you living in the past, always feeling guilty about Christy and your mother. Oh, I see you're doing much better. Still driving around Big Red. Everybody in town knows Mom bought you that for an anniversary gift years ago. I just love you, Tommy, and I worry about you. Well, don't. I'm okay. I know you miss her. I, I miss her, too. Dad, please. All right. The freezer. Oh. Now, if I give it to you, I need something in return. Mm, that's scary. Congressman Hendricks called at the last minute. And he's got the morning free. Now, I need you to take my 9 o'clock. Okay, who is it? So, Colin Jacobs, a uh, man from New York. I think you met him yesterday. Now, he'll be at the Riverview Stables at 9. I want him to see that land on horseback like God intended. And, uh, uh, Tommy, girl yourself up a bit. Give it up, Dad. Mr. Jacobs, Veronica Waters calling from Alabama. It seems they're having a little difficulty with the numbers on the Nelson deal, and you know I personally put that deal together. Colin is doing splendidly on his own. You've got quite a son. He certainly doesn't need me. Oh, thank you. I'll talk with Betty about the flight out. Thank you again. Yes, I am out of here. Freeze ran enough? Yeah, it is, but I was thinking maybe I could sleep over tonight because Christy has a sick camper in her room. You don't have to ask to sleep over. I'll remember to pick up all my dirty socks, or would you rather do it? I think I'll let you do that. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Miss Waters. Your taxi will be here in about 20 minutes. Would you like a little musical entertainment to pass time? No, that won't be necessary. Um, I think I'll do some antique shopping while I wait. Shops don't open till 10. I'll window shop then. Oh, and Jean, my bags are upstairs. Yeah. Ready to go. And?
Miss Waters, I just come to get you. Your taxi's here. All the way to Atlanta? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Where is he, around back? You're looking at him. You're the taxi? Sure I am. Are you sure you want to miss the festival? I kind of had my eye on you for a date. I reckon she'd be all right if you declawed her and defanged her, put a little meat on her bones. Whatever, Gene. You know, you're gonna miss the Lookout Mountain Cloggers. How about we just have a little quiet time? You want to go parking? Go jump in a lake. Swimming? Just shut up and drive. Was that just Veronica? Yeah, she told me to give you this. She wasn't your type. I could see it from the start. Yeah, well, I'm probably better off anyway. Hey, uh, could you take me to the camp? I'm supposed to meet Ben. We're gonna ride the property this morning. Is, uh, let your horseback ride and get up? Yeah. Well, it's all I've got. Son, let me tell you something. What you don't know about horseback riding is a lot. Good morning. Morning. Dad couldn't make it, so once again, I'm your tour guide for the day. Terrific. So, did you get trapped in Jean's closet or did it explode? I know, he was uh, very determined. I can see that. Give me the vest, the bolo, and the belt, and put your blue jeans on the outside of your boots. Uh, the belt's kind of holding up my pants. Keep it then, Tex. incredible. God's most beautiful canvas. You know, as a child, I used to cross this land so often, I could do it with my eyes closed. You used to cross this ridge with your eyes closed? Hey, stop! OK. People usually make fun of things they don't understand. I'm sorry, that was silly. Do you like animals? Boy, I hope you do, because Mr. Hawkins had emus, llamas, Chinese chickens. Boy, the kids are always begging me to let them come feed the animals. They're going to die of disappointment if you don't keep them. Let's go. Hmm. 
Mr. Hawkins and my grandfather were the best of friends. They owned a cotton gin together. Of course, Mr. Hawkins, he grew cotton up until the day he died. The old pump well over there is covered with one of the gin caps. I remember at the end of the day, right before they would close down, my grandfather would come to get me and take me out, and he would throw me up in the trailer, and I would get to jump and play in the cotton. Boy, was it ever fun, jumping and playing in the cotton. Follow this and make a fortune. It's delicious, isn't it? Hey, what do you do in New York? Uh, family business with my dad. You and your father must be close. We have our moments. Hey, I have an idea. Are you hungry? Come on, let's go. Come on, from your gut. Come on! Come on! That's why they're not coming. It's the reason. But for the first time, I'll let you buy with that. These bees don't scare you out. None. Come on, put your finger in taste of it, like this. Oh, bigger than that? I'm trying. <laughs> Best stuff on the mountain. Mm. How sweet are thy words to my taste, O oh Lord. Yes, sweeter than honey. Honey to my mouth. Mr. Hawkins used to say that to me all the time. My grandfather used to say it to me. It's a Jewish tradition. Oh. It's a gorgeous farm. It's too bad you have to sell it. Yeah, it really is. That's why we've been trying to keep everything going. We've been hoping the right person would come along and fall in love with it. Which reminds me, um, I need to stop by the barn. Wanna go? Shirley, let's go. We will go and don't call me Shirley. Hey, it's Tommy. Could you send Christy over here to Shady Grove to pick up two barrels? Yeah, one for Camp Riverview and one for St. Joe's. Okay, thanks. What's the, uh... Oh, the plaque. Mr. Hawkins used to call this place the Promised Land because he and his wife knew that they would have it years before they owned it. It's kind of sad, though, because they never had any children. I guess I was the closest thing they had to a daughter. Maybe that's why I've always thought of it as my promised land, too. Maybe I got a little too much faith for my own good, because it was obviously meant to be your promised land. Would you say something? I'm trying to make a sale here. Thanks for showing me around. My pleasure. Coming to pick you up? Yeah. Do you like the land? Uh-huh. Hey, uh, listen, I was thinking uh, taking Tommy out as a sort of a thank you for showing me around. What, a date? Yeah, sort of. What does she like to do? Hmm. What does Tommy like to do? I'll tell you the truth, I haven't seen her do anything than work at this camp. She doesn't date much, really. So I shouldn't bother? Well, to be honest with you, Tommy's got some issues. Issues? Hi, babe. Hi. Christy, be creative. Colin wants to take Tommy out on a date. A date? Well, for showing me around the property. Oh, of course. I thought maybe a picnic? Oh, a picnic. That's a great idea. You ought to go to the falls. It's very romantic. Oh. You know, how about tomorrow at 11.30? She's got a trail ride, but Daniel can take it. 
shouldn't we check with her first? Oh, no, no. I schedule all of her appointments anyway. Really? It'll be fine. She'll love it. I'm OK, if you're sure. Don't be silly. She'll be thrilled. No. Absolutely no, I will not go. What do you mean, no? I mean, no picnic. I have way too much to do. Tommy, we have more counselors and volunteers than we have ever had before. You do not need to be here every minute of every day. Yes, I do. You have lunch every day. Just think of it as regular old lunch, except for you're sitting on a blanket next to Colin. No! You should have seen him. He was so sweet and cute with those big puppy dog eyes wanting to do something nice for you. Christy, please. Anyway, I told him you would go so you have no choice. I ought to torch your wheelchair. What are you going to wear? Do you need some help picking something out? You know what? I'm going to Dad's. OK, bye. Have fun. OK, she's mad. I am so glad I found you, Colin. I'm sorry about this, but I believe I done gone and rented out your room. You rented out my room? Just listen, you'll understand. It's just for tonight. It's the Bluegrass Boys from Memphis. There was some sort of mix-up, and their state cabin rooms weren't ready, so I rented them two rooms for one night. They used to play with Uncle Walt, you know, at all the state fairs. They're celebrities. Where am I supposed to spend the night? I'd like to help you, but things are pretty full up here. Gene. Uh, Finn's got that big old house up there. Why don't you stay with him tonight? You know, he's all by himself. I'm sure he put you up for one night. I took the liberty of packing up your things for you. Geez, Gene, you shouldn't have. Colin, do it for Uncle Walt, will you? Thanks for understanding. I'll see you tomorrow night, all right? Tommy boy, don't cook. I'll take you to dinner. Dad. Great. get you there? Hey, free of charge. Thanks. Man, I just took Veronica to the airport. She must be a fear to fly it, because she didn't speak the whole way. <laughs> Great song. Thanks. 
So what are you doing here? Uh, Ben, I kind of need you to put me up for the night. Gene rented out my room. Be glad to. Dad, I'm staying here tonight. Well, if it's a problem. There's no problem. I've got enough empty rooms in this house to start my own hotel. We'll have a great big slumber party. Is that dinner I smell cooking? You said not to cook. I'm teasing. We're going to Cragsmere tonight. Get dressed. Um, you two go without me. I don't have anything to wear. Go look through your old closet. I'm not going to a fine restaurant without a beautiful woman on my arm. Now get. Okay. Have a seat, Colin. Peanut? No, thanks. So did uh, Tommy show you all you wanted to see about the land? Yeah, she was a perfect tour guide. Heard a little something about a picnic. Yes, I thought it would be a nice thing to do. That is OK, isn't it? Oh, sure. I, I got nothing against picnics. Uh, Colin, I know Tommy comes across like a tornado, but she's delicate inside. A girl ought to have somebody to talk to growing up about boys and brows and hairdos. And I never knew exactly what to say about those things. I, I was just a bumbling old man when it came to that. What happened to her mother? She was killed in an automobile accident about 12 years ago. She was taking Tommy and Christy swimming, and, well, Tommy came out with a couple of broken bones, but Christy didn't come out so well. Caroline, Tommy's mother. She was the most beautiful girl I had ever laid eyes on. When I was young, I couldn't wait to get out of this place. You know how you always want to prove something to your father? He wanted me to stay on the mountain and take over the cotton farming, but I had to get out of the country. Matter of fact, I came home from college to tell him that I was moving to the city for good. When I stepped off the bus, I saw Calla. <laughs> that she'd grown in four years. I knew then I'd never leave Menton. I couldn't take a rose like that from the garden. Tell me, boy, you look beautiful. Uh -huh. Thank you. Let's go. So I tell my little four-year-old niece, OK, Riley, you can have whatever you want. And she says, ooh, ooh, ooh. Her little mind cannot come up with anything. She says, ooh, 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 ooh. stickers. <laughs> what? Stickers. She's trying to say stickers. She could have anything she wants with stickers. Did you get her the stickers? Of course I did. Lots of stickers? Lots of, lots of, lots of stickers. I'll say so before Uncle Colin changes his mind. Oh, my God, stickers. Where's my stickers, Dad? <laughs> stickers, you, you gotta yeah, say it cute, though. You gotta say stickers. Stickers. <laughs> and she smiles like this, and her bottom teeth come out. Kind of like you. Don't tell everything. <laughs> Secrets. I think I'll tell him about your, uh... No, no, no. I don't go there. No, no, no. Do not go there. Do not go there. We'll leave a fine restaurant. Oh, you know, get down the street. She said, you left this money on the table. It's a 7.5. Go for a whirl.
Time goes by fine, there's no answer. Questions that grow stronger in my mind. What you gonna do, the heart that's cold and warm? Hey, let's go outside. About that. I won't miss us. It's dark out there. Come on. That lady in there, hmm. she's the owner that was dancing with Dad. She has a huge crush on him. You know, I think he kind of likes her, too, although he'd never admit it. He thinks he has to stay true to Mother or something like that. Well, I can understand wanting to stay true to a woman if you loved her deeply enough. He really ought to let Mom go. Maybe he tried and he can. Here, sit down. You know, to a Jewish man, a lantern like this has a lot of significance. Only a Jewish miner. What? It's an old miner's lamp. Oh. Actually, I was thinking about when a man and woman become betrothed. The tradition was, was the man would return to his father's house to prepare the bridal suite where the couple would live after they were married. But before he left his betrothed, he would, he would promise to return. And as a seal and a reminder, he would give her an oil lamp, sort of like this one. He would pull her close, and he would tell her, I don't know how long I'll be gone. So keep always oil in this lamp and be ready for my return. And then he would go. Would he come back for her like he said? Of course. After just a little time, he, he would come back with a shout of her name. Tommy. Come on, you two. Uh, she had something in her eye. Oh, what, were you going to pick it out with your teeth? Can't keep an old man up all night. Got business in the morning. Thanks for dinner, Dad. <laughs> well, kids, all that dancing's done me in. I believe I'm going to turn in. Do you mind if I enjoy the fire for a while? I well, have at it. If you need anything, ask Tommy. And if you can't find it, don't wake this old man up. Good night, Tommy boy. Good night, Dad. I'll be right behind you. Tommy boy. And nothing about you that reminds me of a boy. Oh, that's just Dad's nickname for me. I guess he wanted a boy or something. Blankets. Um, it gets pretty cool up here at night. You'll probably need these blankets. Book? Do you, do you like to read? Um, cocoa. I'll make you some cocoa. I, I don't know that it actually helps me sleep, but it sure does comfort me. I'll get you some cocoa. Do you need comforting, Tommy girl? Here's the rest of your blankets. Uh, gonna go to bed now. Eleven thirty, right? Eleven thirty. Oh, the picnic, right. Colin? Yes. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams.
beautiful. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Uh, the falls are beautiful, too. Hey, I know what. Uh, why don't you tell me your best memory? My best memory? I don't really have one. No best memory. Everybody's got a best memory. Come on. Childhood or adult? Childhood is the best kind. OK, let me think. Childhood, childhood. OK. All right, I got one. One July, Mom and Dad took me to New Orleans on a vacation. I must have been four or five years old. And one late afternoon, Dad said we were going down to watch the fireworks at the riverfront. Well, I didn't even know what fireworks were. So here we go. Dad puts me up on his shoulders, and you know how fireworks makes those ex you know, pow, pow. Well, it terrified me for some reason. So put my head down, and you know the mommy hand? The hand that touches you and lets you know everything's going to be all right? Well, Mom reached up and touched my face and said, look, look, Tommy, look at the fireworks. So I peeked out from under Dad's arm, and there it was, the most beautiful, colorful, fascinating thing I've ever seen in my life. And if I were to close my eyes right now, I could still see the reflection of the fireworks off Mom's face. She was so beautiful. I've gone on and on, haven't I? Oh. I have. You're never going to ask me for a memory again, are you? OK, your turn. You tell me your best memory. I don't know. That was a tough story to follow. Uh, my best memory would have to be when I learned to why dance. Why dance? You don't know how to why dance. I've never heard of it. What is it? Well, I have to teach you. I have to get up? To why dance, you do. OK, you, uh, you put your hands here. OK. And I put my hands here on your waist. Now, why dance? Oh, funny, funny, yeah. I thought you'd like that. Funny, I'm going to get you for that. all dried up. So he recited an ancient proverb. Ancient proverb, huh? Yeah, an ancient proverb. What's the proverb? OK, um, you have to stand up a little bit. You have to throw your arms out, and you have to say, water is life. It's a mental tradition. That's a proverb, water is life? Well, in our language, you have to do it. It's a tradition. OK. Water is wet. Now who's why dancing? <laughs> who's going down, Red? You talking to me? Who's going down? Who's going to do it? Huh. On your mark, get set, go! Don't ah! know who I am. Don't even know who you are sometimes. You walk away. I never could read between those lines. Which foot went first? Over the edge into the blue. Who fanned the thirst of this fiery love for you? Hey, you are pretty girl. <laughs> what? What? What'd she say? Um, she said that you're a smooth talker. <laughs>
Grab us the hole. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm here. Breathe for me. Could you breathe for me? Mike, could Mark, you come okay. help me? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. Um, we're going to take him to the nurse. Could you keep everybody fishing? Sure. Thanks. Let's go fishing. Dad, hi. Yeah, everything's going great. The land's perfect. Uh, hey, I, I, I was thinking, uh, nothing. No, nothing. It's perfect. Yeah, we close on Monday. Everything, everything is on schedule. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. minutes past the hour. Good morning, Alabama. Yeah, Rick, and we want to send a big bubba hello up to Mentone way up on Lookout Mountain. I hear they're getting ready for their annual color fest. Hey, Christy and Tommy do a great job, and here's hoping they raise a bunch of money for that great camp up there for the kids. Camp Riverview. Go get them, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? It is time for the festivities to begin. I know it's going to be a disappointment, but I will not be performing this year in the show, as there's simply not enough time for everyone. And I feel as though I've had more than my share. And as my dear departed Uncle Walt used to always say, Gene, it ain't nice to hog the spotlight. Oh, thank you. In Bible times, it was considered a miracle if you could get a jackass to speak. Around here, it's a miracle if you could get one to shut up. And remember, after the show, there's a dance with those bluegrass boys hailing all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. Now, that's $2 a cup. Now, let's all get together and welcome those wonderful kids from Camp Riverview, led in by Tommy Owen and Christy Moore.
two bucks. What for? For the dance. Will you go with me? Why don't you make your daddy proud and sing like that in church? Mama Murphy, I do sing in church along with the rest of the congregation. Ms. Murphy, go away. Well, I never thought I'd see the day. Tommy, your young man is an impudent scoundrel. Well, I suppose I'm going to have to take this up with Ben. You know she's never going to forgive you for talking to her that way. She was cutting in on our precious time. Now say yes. Yes. More Yes. Well, all right then. an insensitive New York buckethead. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. Just trying to learn how to treat a rose in the garden.
I just want to take a moment and say what a delight the festival was last night and an obvious success. Right now, I have never been prouder of a group of people coming together to help those kids up there at Camp Riverview. You know, folks, that's the true mission of Christ, giving those kids opportunities they might never have had, showing them God's love and his acceptance, and that is something they will carry in their hearts forever. Thank you. God bless you all. Kirk, let's have another song, shall we? Excuse me, Aunt Dave. Okay, sure. Pray inside? No. I probably should be, though. It's what you're supposed to do when you have an important decision, right? No, I found it helpful from time to time. I know how most folks feel about unsolicited advice, but what the heck, I want to give you some anyway. Everybody will be better off in the long run if you just tell the truth. you were here. You left church supper so early, you missed my apple pie. I was out on the brow. Alone? Yeah. I called the camp from Mr. Hawkins' office. Chrissy said you were coming out here. Yeah, to tell you the truth, I'll be glad when you take over. It's going to be one less thing for me to worry about. Tommy, I, I need to talk to you. OK. Could, could you put that stuff down? What's wrong? Tell me, I didn't... I didn't come out here to uh, buy the property on my own. I was sent by my father to acquire the land so our company could coal mine on it. Your family business is coal mining? Oh, I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. This must be my punishment. Tommy, I... No, you lied to me, Colin. Tommy, I'm sorry. How did it feel lying to me? Must have been fun coming down here and pulling the wool over a bunch of stupid rednecks. I didn't ask to come down here. It's my job. It's, it's what I do. Well, it stinks. Tommy, just let me finish. You know what? You are finished. Why don't you go home? You're not welcome here anymore. Well, I can't leave like this. I came out here to tell you that I care about you. I knew it the other night when I saw you dancing in Ben's arm, and, and I wanted it to be me. I, I know you're angry. I just... Angry? Angry doesn't begin to describe it. You want to take the most beautiful land God ever created and destroy it. Have you ever seen a strip mine? Do you know what it does to the land? Of course I do. Which makes what you're doing even worse. 
I guess now you'll go back with your big city friends and have a big laugh about the stupid southern girl you let on. I'm standing here. I'm not laughing. I genuinely care about you. I do not want you to care for me. I want you to care for the kids at the camp who will never get to see that skyline ever again. Do you even know what your company's doing? I imagine he does, Tommy. His company's been mining around here for years. I'm sorry. Not sorry enough. Wait a minute, Tommy. Give the man a chance to defend himself. He's in business just like we are. You don't have to like it, but hear him out. Why don't you take his side and not mine? Because you know what? You've never understood what Camp Riverview means to me. You, you think that... I think you're still carrying around guilt because of the accident. Well, I think that you don't know anything about me or even what I want. At least I'm trying to help the person that I hurt. I'm trying to make things better for her. I'll go talk to her. Humor an old man, son. Walk with me a spell. all this has happened. But I think that Colin really cares about you. So why are you punishing yourself, pushing him away like this? Is it because of me? Because you feel guilty that I'm paralyzed and, and you're not? <laughs> Tommy, I wasn't the only one who suffered because of the accident. You lost your mother. <sighs> but Tommy, that was 12 years ago. It's time to let it go. I have. I'm happy. I'm in love. You're the only one that treats me like I'm handicapped. I have gone on and made the best of what I have. Isn't that what we wanted Riverview to be all about? It's not about the land. It's about hope for kids who are disabled. But you know, I'm beginning to think that you're the disabled one. You're the one that's lost hope. son, no matter what your company does to reclaim it, no matter how many trees you plant, this landscape will never be the same. I know. Colin, does your company really need this deal? No. I need this deal. Never realized it would come down to an issue of ethics, though. <laughs> ethics. That's a set of rules laid out by professionals to show how they'd like to act if it were profitable. Mark Twain? Ben Owen. You don't have to do this, you know. I gave you my word, and I told you. My word, my bond. You say goodbye to Tommy for me? I will. Goodbye, Ben. Goodbye, son.
Dead. Colin, come on in. I was just hiding from the phone. Congratulations. You now own 800 acres of prime Alabama farmland. Congratulations to you. You did it, son. Uh, I'm proud of you. Say that again. I know I've not been overly complimentary, but you did an excellent job. This is probably going to be the most productive piece of property we've ever owned. Dad, you should see it. It's stunning. It's right on the edge of this mountain. It's an incredible view. It looks right down into the valley. It's like... <laughs> it's like what Tommy said. God's most beautiful canvas. It must have been difficult going through it, feeling the way you do. I told you I'd get you the land, and I give you my word. I didn't want to disappoint you. Since we got a couple of days between sessions, you want to get away? Go on a little trip or something? Um, no, um, I need to stay here and clean off my desk. I really got a lot of work to do, but, but thank you. Riding Shady Grove again? Yeah, you caught me. I was thinking, I'm going down the mountain in the morning and pick myself out a new truck, and I sure could use some help. Uh, female opinion. Good for you, Dad. I love you. And I'm so proud of you, and I love you, Daddy's girl. <laughs> Hawkins place. Bucky saw something when he was driving past and he called. Bucky, let Daniel handle it. I'm going over there right now. Bucky said somebody was vandalizing the house oh. or taking the animals. Oh, oh, okay. Where's my flashlight? Here, take this. Christy, is this the old pioneer days? Just hurry. Okay, okay, okay. Go. the lamp. You send it? Tell me. Just don't ever leave me again. I love you. Some 
special for you. I, uh, this is the best I can do on such short notice. Hey, Gene, Bucky Pearl, let it rip. Roger! The official welcome to the new Jacob's Place. The Jacob's Place? You bought it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm unemployed and heavily in debt and deeply in love. Fireworks. Uncle Walt would be proud. What's going on? Now, Mama Murphy, don't you think fireworks you better enjoy from afar? There's a courting going on. Someone's here to see you. I told you I had big plans. Yeah. No. There's a Lear Jen waiting. Fast flame, you fly in more ways than one. You're running out of time. You're dreaming of a good life, being all that you can be. Now you're faced with what it is. Are you too blind to see? A southern heart will shine in the dark. Speed on. 
says without a dream or a vision that the people perish and we've worked on this film for nine years and we just want to say don't ever let anybody tell you no you go for your dreams don't give up on your dreams <laughs> makeup <laughs> yeah, okay.